What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome back to the Sooner Surge. We are one day away, one night's sleep away from the Red River rivalry. 11 a.m. kick tomorrow. Uh, cannot wait. And we're here for Sooner Surge game time. You can see all the links down at the bottom. The most important one would be to click the subscribe button so that you're a part of what's happening on the Sooner Surge. You can see all the other social media links for the Sooner Surge guys right there on the bottom of the screen. So please be a part of it. I uh, don't want to miss it. Let's get started, guys. Opening thoughts on this week's, uh, this year's Red River rivalry. Opening thought for me is uh, I'm not sure what to expect. And uh, just between the two teams, I mean, Texas, they have played, I think, three ranked teams now. Uh, and obviously the big one being Alabama, right? So you, you kind of have a little bit of more to gauge with them. OU's 5-0, and and they've looked the part. But this is the first, like, big-time matchup. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. And I think my the biggest word is I'm anxious. I'm anxious to see what OU looks like because they could look really good, in my opinion, and this team could be for real. Right, and I think this is maybe the most important game for both teams since – what I mean, like 2018 was obviously important. That's the only one that I remember. I mean, there's like obviously the games in the early 2000s, maybe like like the 2008 game. I mean, I don't really know, but it's just like there's just so much riding for both teams. And really, this is an Oklahoma team that if they win, that we could be talking about being a for real playoff contender, a team that maybe rides – really their ceiling on how the rest of their season plays out. And also this is a Texas team that obviously has the outstanding win against Alabama at Alabama. So, and this is a Texas team that is a lot, has a lot more talent than anyone Oklahoma has faced all year and probably the best on both sides of the ball. Also the Oklahoma has faced all year, but this game is going to come down a lot really to how Oklahoma can really just complement each other on each side of the ball. And this is truly a game that is going to have the country's attention all over it. Uh, Jackson, I'll correct you on one thing. Every Red River rivalry game matters. I don't care what the records are. It matters in recruiting. It matters in the standings. It matters in the heart. Uh, regardless. Now, if you want to say this is one of the biggest ones, yeah, I could go with that. That As far as most anticipated matchups, yes. And what I am really – my opening thoughts on this game is I'm, I, I really want to see uh, the composure, the discipline, uh, everything that Brent Venables has been preaching. I want to see it come to fruition because it has so far this year. They've been really sound, haven't had many busts. I, I want to see that in this game. Yeah, this is the first time both teams came into the matchup undefeated since 2011. Uh, 2008, like Jackson mentioned, both teams were 5-0 and first time that they're both 5-0. and So, uh, I, again, this game is so hard to read uh, from, like, looking ahead at it because you have Texas. They went to Alabama and they won by double digits. Then you watch Alabama the next week struggle against South Florida. So how good is Alabama? Uh, Texas struggled a bit against Wyoming. They struggled a bit against Kansas. Both games they pulled away. So you have to give Texas credit for that stuff. I've said I think Texas should be the number one team in the country as they're the only team that has really looked the part. I think they're 5-0 and against the spread uh, this year. Of the top three teams, they're the only one to be 5-0 and against the spread. And then you look at OU. Uh, OU hasn't had a great opponent. Uh, their two best opponents were Cincinnati and Iowa State so far in those first five games. But they've looked the part. The offense struggled against Cincinnati. The defense was the first time that Cincinnati hasn't scored a touchdown since that Bama game and the playoff a few years ago. And then you look at Iowa State. Defense looked great to start the game. You had to pick six from Billy Bowman, third play of the game. And then covered, uh, busted coverages happened. Uh, safeties just miscommunicating. Uh, 21 to 20. Uh, the rest of the game, Iowa State only gains 82 yards. OU wins 50 to 20. So it's just both teams have like 
I don't know how to describe it. Like both teams have firepower. Both teams have looked very good. Texas, this is the best Texas team in for sure 10 years. Uh, OU, this is the best defense through five games and probably 10 years as well. So it's going to be interesting what kind of matchup we get. Uh, right. on- uh, and I think you said it well is that both teams have firepower on both sides of the ball so much and it's going to come down to uh to maybe what teams have that it factor what players have that it factor and you know obviously there's been a lot of talk about who's the better qb in this game is it ewers or is it dylan gabriel so it's just like really what's really what's going to happen and really how is oklahoma um maybe going to be able to maybe handle really the maybe being such an underdog according to some of the national people because like obviously I think that Oklahoma at this point in the year is an underrated team. I do. I think they should be a top ten team. But uh, I am truly a decision doesn't, in the game. What doesn't matter what you're ranked. Right now you got to go take care of business. I don't care if they're three or one. I don't care if OU's 14, 12, or 10, doesn't matter. Win the game. You'll be where you want to be. Uh, both teams are 5-0 and against the spread. It's 10-0 and against the spread heading into the Red River Rivalry weekend. Yeah. So, obviously, both these teams uh, ha- have done everything they're supposed to do up until now. Let's get into the next thing, guys. Keys to the game. Yeah, I'll uh, start. Uh, I'm going to kind of give a couple. Uh, the big thing is the run game. You got to have it. We did the video if you guys watched it. Over the past 15 years, you pretty much have to beat the other team in rushing yards to be able to win that game. A lot of it comes down to the line of scrimmage, and that's the other thing transition to. Uh, so you have the run game. Who's going to win that? Uh, Texas has looked great. Jonathan Brooks has looked like one of the best running backs in the country, really stepped up to fill in uh, as B. John Robinson's now killing it in the NFL. OU, on the other hand, we don't really know who that guy is. It looks like Marcus Major, but you can also make that argument for Tawi Walker, Gavin Salchuk, Javante Barnes hasn't played much. Uh, those two guys were expected to be uh, RB1, RB2, and uh, so OU still has to figure that out. But really uh, what I'm looking at is the defensive line matchup for OU against – or really for both teams, but specifically OU's defensive line against Texas's offensive line. Texas hasn't allowed a sack all year. They've had a very, very good offensive line. Kelvin Banks has been great for the Longhorns. Uh, OU has not gotten many sacks, but they've created pressure. So something's going to have to give in that matchup. Uh, I I really think that maybe OU doesn't get the sacks, but I think that they'll be able to get that pressure to Quinn Ewers to allow the secondary and linebackers to be able to make plays. To me – to me, the key to this game is Dylan Gabriel. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, the better quarterback's going to win this. The team's going to win if the quarterback plays better. And and, and I look for Dylan Gabriel. I, I think it's a huge game for him, obviously, for obvious reasons. It's Red River rivalry. He hasn't been in a game in this atmosphere ever. Okay, This is his t- t- chance to stamp his uh, place in OU lore. Okay, And – He's play, He's hot right now. He's playing really well. He seems really prepared every week. Um, and I think OU's going to ride and die on Gil, Dylan Gabriel. We've talked about run game, yes. But OU's not winning this game with Dylan Gabriel having two or three turnovers and not maybe 180 yards. It's not happening. He's got to play well. Yeah. Well, Jay, uh, you stole the key that I was going to say, but – I'll say another key that I have is Gentry Williams and Woody Washington. They are going to play maybe the – I would say the second best uh, wide receiver tandem in the country and Xavier Worthy and A.D. Mitchell. They are both going to be NFL guys, probably first, second-round picks in next year's draft. And so this is going to be a good test, and they both can hit on the explosive play – in an instant, and I think that they both, for OU, have played great ball up to this point in the year, but they haven't been tested with two legitimate NFL-caliber guys yet. So it'll be interesting, I think, for me to see just how those guys handle it. And I do think that Brent Venables is going to play a lot of man coverage and test their wide receivers. 
And also, I think he's going to blitz a lot, which will allow for more uh, one-on-one coverage on the outside. And, you know, I do think that if Oklahoma's secondary can lock down the receivers or control them, that Oklahoma will have a lot of success defensively. And, yeah, it's – to me, look, I'll get to my key, but going off what Jay said, yeah, Gabriel's got to spread the ball around. Uh, we need to see multiple receivers active and engaged in what's happening. Uh and to your point, Jackson, uh, if this is going to be a Gentry Williams, Woody Washington one-on-one battle all game, we better be pressuring the quarterback because you're not staying with Worthy and Mitchell all game on an island. I promise you. So pressure is key. I agree. And I- I'm going to say that my key to the game is one that's often underlooked but is usually a key in this Red River rivalry with special teams. Uh, we've seen special teams make or break And, guys, it goes from punting, it goes from long returns, it goes from field position, and it goes from making kicks. We saw Burkett mix one when he was automatic uh, for an overtime. We saw uh, Dicker, the kicker, her OU several times. So I think special teams is going to be huge, and that will lead me into this next topic, guys. And I'm going to kind of switch the order on you. So let's go hot take. And I'll I'll start with the hot take. I'm saying Billy Bowman's running a kickback. Billy? Oh, okay. There's my hot take. All right, my my hot take is Quinn. Oh, you get three turnovers on defense, uh, and it, they've had 13 turnovers in five games. They're they're top of the country. I mean, they're doing really well in that category. And I do think, like Jackson mentioned earlier, I think Brent Venables is bringing people a lot because I think. If you watch any of Texas's games, if he gets some pressure on him, that's when he's at his worst, as most quarterbacks are. But I think Brent's going to dial up some big time blitzes, and I think OU's going to get cause three turnovers. All right, my hot take is uh, Addy Pudju, Addy Barraway uh, gets a strip sack for Quinn Ewers uh, off the edge, maybe against Kelvin Banks. Who knows? Uh, I think OU finally gets that pressure. Hey, and PJ is just he, hey, he's he's going to be a special player in a few years. PJ Adeboy, he's hey, Hunter, not a few years. He's Trace be Ford on the Ford animal man. this morning. Yeah, what about it? Trace Ford on the animal this morning said he was getting a strip sack. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. maybe. I, I know the last time they talked about uh, yeah. Trace Ford making a big play, uh, he had that interception against. Uh, Tulsa, and then yep. last week he had a kind of not a good moment. Um, yeah. Blocked punt. So, Jackson, what's your hot take? Well, Hunter, uh, I was going to say something about Adibare, but, um, you know, I'll say my hot take is that Jaleel Farouk catches an 80 plus yard touchdown from Dylan Gabriel. Wow. I think Jal- Jaleel Farouk is going to catch a slant or something and take it to the house. I think that they're going to try a lot to get Farouk in space. And another name that I, that I want really people to watch out for is Brendan Thompson. I think it'll be fun to see how he gets used against his former team as well. But I think that Jaleel Farouk is going to score an 80-plus yard touchdown. Yeah, if, if uh, Trace Ford does get a strip sack in the end zone, fall on it, Trace, please. Hey, Sooner standouts. Let's go to Sooner, Sooner standout. We want one offensive, one defensive standout. I'll, I'll start – I'll start with a freshman on the defensive end. Uh, if you guys uh, – I, I know, Jay, I'm sorry. Uh, if you guys watched the video me and Jay did earlier about, like, favorite moments, uh said Peyton Bowen's going to have that freshman moment. It, we talk about it all the time. Uh, this is the game where superstars are made. Uh, if mm. anyone has been to an OU game, any of the listeners, you know, the video they do with the boss, like – this is where they kind of get those names. I mean, Roy Williams became Superman in OU Texas. I think Peyton Bowen finally gets that interception. Yeah, I, I'm going to go. My defensive sooner standout is this one might surprise you all a little bit, but I think he might even score a defensive touchdown here. I'm going to go with Jaron Canick. Okay. Uh, I think Danny Sessman on the blitz, Danny Sessman, something could happen and Canis going to get a ball and score. I, I think he, he's my sooner standout this week. Uh, didn't play as well last week, but I think this is 
he's going to have a big time, big time moment in this game. I really do. Yeah, uh, I'll go with my sooner defensive standout. As you know, I might say the cheap way out on this, the easy way, but it's going to be Danny Stutzman, guys. I mean, he just he makes plays. What does he have on the year? Is it like 49 tackles, 41 tackles? A lot. It's, it's a lot of tackles, right? He has a lot of tackles for loss. He has, a, he has an interception for a pick six. And, you know, I think Stutzman, he's going to show why he's the best linebacker in the country, why he deserves that Buckus Award, why he's playing like the best as of right now as well. So I think Stutzman's going to have a massive game and prove why he deserves to be up in the top of the linebackers, maybe in even Oklahoma history with the guys like Teddy Lehman and Brian Bosworth and as the names go on. And Yeah, Jay, you took mine, uh, but I'm going to – I'm going to pick someone who's maybe been one of the best, or if not the best, one of the best defensive players all year long and has just kind of been under the radar, but he's been so consistent. And I think this week we're going to see uh, him get recognized a little more, maybe because of more lockdown one-on-one coverage. I think Woody Washington is going to uh, solidify himself uh, as one of the premier corners uh, in the nation. Uh, this week because it will be it will be noticed if he shuts down one, either one of those two guys and makes big plays. So that's my defensive standout. Transitioning to offense, I'm going to go with the Greek god himself, Nick Anderson. All he does is catch touchdowns. He'll catch two more this weekend. Yeah, I'll go next. You know, I'm going to take uh, the Texas transfer, Brennan Thompson, man. I think he uh, is going to – explode onto the scene. I think Brennan Thompson is going to go for over 100 yards against his former team. Use the speed. And, I mean, he might be the fastest player in the country. I mean, he's that fast. He is the fastest so, player. I think that Brennan Thompson's going to have a massive day against his former hey, team. Hey, really I'll go next. I don't know what Hunter's saying, but I'm sticking with the wide receiver unit here. And I think it's so important – that they hit some over-the-top stuff. Uh, they have to. Teams have missed on Texas this year. They've had open receivers deep. you got to capitalize. And with Watts being a day-to-day decision and game-time decision, that's a huge, huge uh, – if they don't have him. Uh, and even if they do, he's kind of a bigger guy. You, you could get a mismatch there. And I'm going to go with double A. I'm going to go with double A battery, Andrew Anthony. Uh, he's gonna have a he's an energizer, double A battery. Don't need to know any recharge those batteries. He's gonna have a big game. Well, I, I guess I'll be the fourth one to pick a wide receiver. Oh wow. Uh, officially his Great. last time in the cotton bowl. Uh, so last year people thought that might be his last one. Uh Drake Stoops, he was one Ooh. of the four to speak with media uh this week for the Sooners. I think Stoops is really gonna have that. Uh, big time game, his final Cotton Bowl game against Texas, and I, I think he, he can be a key part to hopefully a Sooners win. Hunter, he's yeah. had big moments every year at Texas. He's yeah, oh, the overtime. I mean, he's he's been in big plays there. I, I think a hundred yard performance from Stoops. That's oh, what wow. I'm, well, he, he, here's the uh, thing well, about I mean, that'd be a career game for Stoops too if he got a hundred. Uh, I think he kind of gets in the middle of the field. On those third and long some, uh, I it's yeah. been really Stoops and Andrew Anthony on like third and above seven when mm-hmm. they're going to just pass the chain. So I think uh, Stoops gets a few of those passes and hauls them in uh, this time. I know he's had a few drops. Stoops has been, guys, Stoops has been almost the safety valve tight end. One of the reasons OU's third down conversion is so high yeah. is because of Drake Stoops alone. He does find the zone the open area. He doesn't drop the ball most likely, and he knows where the yardage marker is every time and he gets there. So, yeah, could be a huge key. Uh, Tomorrow, 10.30 a.m., the one, the only, Baker Mayfield will be giving his prediction on this game. But until then, you'll have to live with our predictions on the game. So let's get our score predictions, guys. I'll start. I'm going to go with 34-20 Sooners by 14. 
Uh, I'll go next, man. You know, I think it's going to be a close game. It's going to be a fun game. Um, I believe that Oklahoma is going to win by a score of 24 to 21. Uh, oh, man, this is tough. It's still hard for me to pick this, and we still got another day to go. I'm not ready to give my prediction yet, but I'm going to go. My heart's telling me right now, go for it. My heart's saying OU 38, uh, Texas 10, guys. That's what my heart's telling me right now. And <laughs> Dude, it's just like all the upset picks, Jay, crazy. Hey, it, it is what it is. It's 24 hours away, and, you know, you, you, it's just what I'm, I'm going to go with tonight, today. Yeah, uh, ties aren't an option, or that's what I would pick. Uh, this game is so hard to kind of figure out what will happen because I think OU is very underrated. I mean, there's a reason they're number two in the country for FBI. Like, that's above Texas. I think, uh, I believe, like, Ohio State's number one, maybe Georgia. I know it's not Texas. So, OU's number two in that. Uh, the spread is, like, now down to five. For Texas, it's been fluctuating a bit. Uh, I know everyone at ESPN are very uh, Texas, barely. Uh, also just, I mean, Texas has that win over Bama, but I, it's Brent Venables in the Cotton Bowl. DG's playing this year. Uh, I'm going to go OU 28, Texas 27. One point win. Wow. Uh, OU's been very good in the red zone after they have given up some big plays. They've been able defensively to get it together and either force a turnover on downs or force a field goal attempt. I think they force a few out of Texas, so 28-27. Yeah, Hunter, Texas on the opposite. They have not been good in the red zone. And exactly. That's, that's the other thing. Yeah. yeah. That's my big part yeah. in this game. And, hey, Baker Mayfield on game day is going to be freaking – Entertainment, baby. Dude, I mean, yeah. he's the best, he's best they've ever had in the history of game day, bro. Hey, he's gonna probably wear that one shirt, you know, that Texas shirt he wears. Yeah, uh, probably. I, I wonder. He says he's downing three funnel cakes. So I wonder if he gets one in on uh, live TV or not. Oh, I'm sure. Well, all I know is his Baker Mayfield's beard was looking uh, perfectly trimmed up for his big appearance. He's he knows this. Is, he even said it's one of the biggest moments of his life, guys. It's an honor for you guys to be uh, part of the Sooner Surge. We love, it's honor having you part. And it's an honor, guys, just to be on the field with this Texas team. Just an honor that OU can maybe walk out there and be able to be on the field with them. So Yeah, I hope, yeah. They, hope they are able to play the game, you know. I know, it's going to be interesting. But, yeah, it's Friday before Red River rivalry. Uh, and Texas still sucks. Till next time, Boomer. <laughs>